Am I still muted now? <laughs> oh, wow. Rocky start. Rocky start. Okay. Mm. Okay. I'm going to have to put this in the chat. Uh... Okay. Audio is good now? Okay. Great. Can hear you now. Beautiful. Okay, good. I'm so sorry about that. Um, I was literally, and I was just saying at the top of it, I was like, my, uh, I'm having technical difficulties with my audio. Um, because like right before I came on my, my like little, uh, my adapter that plugs in my microphone, it seemed to be acting really finicky because my mic kept getting unplugged. And I was saying, well, I hope if that happens, then it'll just transfer over to my computer audio. Uh, but it looks like it just uh, decided to mute me on StreamYard. So that is super great, super cool. If you're catching this on the replay, sorry you had to sit through that as well. Um, but yeah, it, it's looking like everything is okay now. Um, and I'm sorry about that. But yeah, just let me know if that happens again. And I will do my best to keep up on the chat. Um, <laughs> Kylie's tribute to the silent movie era. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, oops. I just knocked my desk. Um, yeah. Okay. All right, I think we're all good to go now. Good stuff. Okay, so now I got to rewind. I'll just say thank you again to George Hicks. <laughs> thank you for the tip. Um, I just, I basically just said A Nightmare on Elm Street is not one of my favorites either, but this is really interesting and exciting news. Uh, so we're going to get into all of that. And I don't really have an order for all the stuff that I want to get into. Um, and hopefully, hopefully you guys were aware I was like saying hello to everybody. That's all I do in the first couple minutes of my lives anyways. Uh, oh, the Will Meister is here. <laughs> you realize April 1st was two and a half months ago, right? I cried watching that video of Robert England and the Freddie makeup for the final time a few years ago in the meet and greet. What fresh hell. Oh, I know this isn't, this is not a joke though. This is, I'm not like April 1st and you guys, uh, we can, we can head over to the article right now if you guys would like to, and we can kind of talk about what's going on. Um, because as of right now, I was clickbaited by this article. I was quick clickbaited on Twitter because like a bunch of people were talking about it. And so let's just, I'll show you what's, what the deal is. Uh, cause it's still, it's still really interesting news. Um, and he tentatively could be coming back. So Let's uh, find this article. Oh, there it is. And I'll share my screen. Okay. Um, Blumhouse would get Robert England to play Freddy again. Oh, also, I just found this website, Joe Blow, and they have a plethora, so many great articles. Just It seems like they're, they're just pumping them out all the time. Um, so, essentially... Here's what's going on. Okay, so the rights to the franchise are in the hands of Wes Craven's estate, and they've been taking pitches for almost three years now. I think we have talked about the fact that Elijah Wood's production company um, want, want to make one. And then now it turns out that a co-writer of Scream 2022 uh, has said that he wants to write one as well. Um, and Blumhouse is currently trying to acquire the rights to A Nightmare on Elm Street and Friday the 13th. Like, Blumhouse just wants the rights to everything, which is like a, a little bit troublesome just because Blumhouse is going to become the Disney of horror, which I'm not really on board with, but like, I'm a fan of the stuff they do, so I might be okay with that. I don't know. I just don't know. Uh, so continuing, basically, Jason Blum, I don't know if he's just getting too big for his britches or what, but he, he said, I could make him come back. I can get anyone back. Ellen Burstein, Burstein? How do you say that? Was 87 and I got her back in The Exorcist. Yeah, Robert England is 75. He's young. So, I don't know. Essentially, Jason Blum is just like, he's been teasing about it. I think that there was an interview with him, but I haven't had a chance to watch it yet. And he was just kind of teasing the whole time. Like, yeah, I mean, if anybody can get Robert England back, I can. And we're currently trying to get the rights and everything. And I just would not be surprised if that happened. But would love to would love to know your thoughts gonna go through gonna go through the the chat right now oh you're at roller skating hell yeah good times good times you wouldn't mind seeing him back bring back jackie instead of robert that's such a that's gonna be such a hot take but honestly one that i agree with so yeah i don't know come at me i guess but i i would agree with that uh, you love Robert, but he's 75 enough. He needs to maybe be a part of a Nightmare on Elm Street TV show in a non-Freddy role. 
Yeah, that'll be really interesting. Um, it was really nice seeing him in Stranger Things. I think little roles, you know, where he can kind of be the creepy old guy. I think that would suit him for now, you know? Um, I think that would. But yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm just, I I don't know. And oh, oh, and another thing, shoot, I should have had the article pulled up where he was interviewed about this. But I feel like we talked about this a long time ago as well at some point on my channel. But Robert England himself feels like he is too old to return to the role. And so that was another reason why I'm like, okay, Jason Blum, maybe you could, maybe you could really calm down. Like, let's maybe settle down on this whole I can get anybody back mentality because, like, all right, man. Mm. I don't know if like all the, you know, Blumhouse Halloween success is going to his head or I guess the fact that he got back uh, a very elderly actress in uh, The Exorcist and that's why he thinks he can. I don't know. And also all of the people that he got back in Halloween Kills. I mean, Halloween 2018, we had Jamie Lee Curtis and then and also John Carpenter was producing and he made the score with his son. And then in Halloween Kills, they brought back a good, so many people like, um, uh, what's her name? Kyle something who plays Lindsay in the original. She came back. Sheriff Brackett came back. Uh, yeah, it was just, it was a lot of people. And so I think he, um, oh shoot. We got bots in the chat. Oh my Lord. Okay, I, I swear to you, I swear to you, July is the month where I get myself together. I get everything together and we're going to have mods. Because I'm finally, a little update, I'm finally going to be taking a little break from like set work and all that kind of stuff. I'm going to go home and visit my family and you guys are going to get a cool live stream with me and my dad. Probably a couple because I'll be home for a couple weeks. Um, and then hopefully I can kind of organize some of my stuff, get caught up in some stuff I'm behind on. Anyway. You don't see it happening. You don't see him coming back. Yeah, it's just the fact that Robert England himself has said, you know, he's he's too old for the role. If he himself is saying that, and they they haven't even acquired the rights yet, but I'm I'm sure they're going to. I'm sure they're going to. I don't know. I don't know. You're good with them finding another actor. I I would say the same. Uh. Robert England doesn't want to come back. He said for a long time himself, he's too old for all that. That's what I'm saying. But then there's people like this, you know, can't nobody play Freddy but Robert. I just would disagree because of like how well Jackie Earl Haley did. Um, I, I love Jackie as Freddy Krueger. And even, even Robert England himself said that Jackie Earl Haley, you know, he thought the torch was passed really well with him. Um, so, you know, the man himself has said the torch was already well passed. We need a new fresh take on Freddy. I love to hear you say so. I would agree. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, Rockfan is here. Nice. His age doesn't really matter, though, considering he's under a ton of makeup anyways. See, okay. <sighs> Sorry. Uncomfortable. I would agree with that. Oh, my foot's asleep. Oh, my foot's asleep. Okay. I'm gonna, gonna power through. Gonna power through. I would agree with that, uh, except for the fact that like his movements are also pretty important, you know? And also, I mean, okay, there could be, there could be a point to this because in the original, when he runs around and stuff and he has his like spooky arms out and everything, he, he does kind of like hobble, you know, he kind of hobbles around and already kind of has the mannerisms of a, you know, a hunched over kind of guy. So <clears throat> maybe that would be okay. But at 75, I just don't see Robert England wanting to, like, you know, run around and physically chase anybody in a dream sequence or something. Like, I don't, I don't see that happening, you know? Um, so we'll see. Uh, Robert has said he wasn't coming back multiple times. Jason Blum is, is very, he's very confident about it. He's like, I can get anyone back. So I don't know why he's making such a show unless, you know, things are already in the works. I mean, clear, you know, clearly nothing is like actually in the works yet, but if like they weren't actively having conversation about it or something. And I also wonder if the, you know, I wonder if his mind could ever be changed, especially now that he just starred in season four of Stranger Things. And that, you know, season four has been one huge tribute to A Nightmare on Elm Street, essentially. So, 
you never know, you know, maybe being on set and all that could have changed his mind. There's things to think about. Mm, okay, this is a really good point. Desi's here also. Uh, I feel like the way he approaches the situation is exactly why Robert will say no. That's a good point too. Um, also, Burston coming back isn't the same. Robert will have to sit through hours of makeup. It's more physical. Yeah, that's so true. That is so true. And oh, and to think of like, you know, at his big age, at 75, it's like you can't be bringing old people onto set for 16 hour days like that anymore. Um, and I'm granted it would be a huge, like big budget project where they would be able to afford really nice trailers that are like fully equipped, big comfy bed, bathrooms, whatever, all of that. But it's the fact that like also old people really should not just be sitting still for that long. Like they gotta, they gotta move their bones, <laughs> you know? Um, and I'm sure he's like a really healthy 75, but even so it's like, that's just a lot. And also on aged skin as well. It's more sensitive. And it's like, if they're having to stick all the prosthetics on there, um, I, I had like just barely any, it's called spirit gum. That's what like typically they'll use to glue on prosthetics and stuff. And that stuff is, it's harsh. Like they have a special type of remover that's specifically to remove it. And even using that, like it does not feel good to take it off. I just can't imagine like being elderly and having really sensitive skin and you know, having the whole face, I'm sure they don't put like, I'm sure they don't put it all over their face. I don't know how it works with like full body prosthetic stuff. Um, but you know, I, they'd still, they still would have to use some sort of glue, uh, right? Because they don't, they don't just have like a pullover mask for him. It's like this whole process. So anyway, um, this is an interesting point. Victor and Sean have been fighting for the rights for years now. Why would they sell to Jason? It makes no sense to me. Was it, I could be mistaken, but I thought that it was recently settled between them, right? I don't know. <clears throat> uh, yes, Kyle Richards is who came back for Halloween Kills. Um, let's see. Oh, I didn't know this. He made a, he made a guest appearance on the show, the TV show, The Goldbergs as Freddy, and he really didn't look that good. I didn't know about that. I didn't even know that that was a thing. I didn't know that happened. When was that? Here, I'll just, I'll, I'll look it up. Um, let's see. Okay, Freddy Krueger on the Goldbergs. Oh, excuse me. Okay, I'm just gonna try to find an image and then I'll I'll share my screen. Uh, okay, okay, yeah. Here's something. Just share my screen really quick. Hmm. So. Is this, wait, is that from Returns in the Goldbergs promo? I'm hoping that this is from the promotion, but I can't really tell. Uh, let's see. Oh, here, from the Goldbergs. I mean, he looks essentially the same to me. It's, it's hard to tell. Like, I mean, he, he would look the same under the makeup, I would think, right? Unless maybe you're not talking about, like, his physical appearance. Maybe you're talking about the acting performance. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Uh, let's see. Oh, oh, somebody. Oh, shoot. I just, I missed some chats. My bad. Uh, let's see. I'm sorry. I hate when the chat jumps like that. Okay, this was this is what I wanted to point out. If Harrison Ford is returning as Indiana Jones, maybe England could work. It just uh, I I uh I have reservations about Harrison Ford returning as well. I'm just cuz like the the best part of Indiana Jones is when he's, you know, doing all that stunt work and fighting with the bad guys and I just don't really see it working out too well currently. Um so yeah, I don't know. I, I'm not really a proponent for him coming back. And also, I think that Desi had a really good point. Like, Jason Blum acting all pompous about it and being like, yeah, don't even worry about it. Don't even worry about it because I can get anyone back. I think that's such a weird... That's so weird. Like, if someone was acting like that about me, I'd be like, you know what? Just because you were acting like that, I am never coming back. <laughs> like, that is just so lame. It's just so lame. Okay, I should get more up to date on the chat. My bad. 
Uh, oh, oh, true, true. Also from Desi, the guy playing Vecna in Stranger Things, you think he could pull that off? I would agree. I think he would be great. He's the guy from Twilight. I can't remember his real name. Jamie Campbell Bauer. That just came to me. That was amazing. Um, let's see. Oh, hello from Germany. Hello. Guten Tag. Uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, Friday the 13th, or Halloween. Which franchise is your favorite? Um, I don't know. I don't know that. Well, uh, I would, I would literally have to say Halloween just because of the new, like the modern trilogy that's currently coming out. Um, both those other franchises haven't had a movie come out in a long time. And so a lot of the stuff is just like outdated and not so much my taste. So yeah, I guess I would have to say Halloween though. All of those franchises are really messy, honestly. Um, let's see. Um, oh, hey, Austin is here. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah, this is a really good point. Dead Noise is here. Jackie Earl's Haley, Jackie Earl Haley's performance is unfortunately overshadowed by how awful the rest of the remake was. I wouldn't mind seeing him rep reprise the role. You know what would also be really cool is something that would be really stupid, but like, hear me out. So multiverses are really hot right now. So like, what if they both came back? You know, because like, there, it's not like there are that many rules in the dream world. So, like, what if they both came back and then it was kind of like a requel type of situation and Robert England could kind of pass the torch off or something? I need to plug in my computer. Excuse me. Oy. There it is. Okay. All right. There we go. Now we are set. We are set. Okay. I know I got some some super chats. So I'm just going to scroll down and say thank you really quick. Thank you to the Willmeister. I mean, Blumhouse got Nick Castle as Michael Myers and he was 70 at the time. That's true, but I think he only really reprised the role in like one or two scenes, right? Also remember when England was 70, uh, himself came briefly back as Freddie and the Goldbergs, right? So we were, yeah, we were just talking about that. Um, yeah. And I'll have to, I'll have to look that episode up. But I just didn't know about that. Um, Adam Sandler is Freddy Krueger. Uh, no. Uh, no. I don't think so. Jason Blum on his villain arc. Right? Right? He's just getting a little too successful. He's, he's, it's getting to his head a little bit. Mm. Willem Dafoe is Freddy Krueger? I wouldn't mind that. I wouldn't mind that at all. That guy can be real weird. Let's see. He, he's supposed to be a creepy old man. He can still be a creepy old man at 75. I would agree, but it's just like a matter of doing any kind of chase scenes or, you know, offering any kind of physicality to the role. I just think that that would be really tough with Robert England. I don't know if that would work. Oh, and, and his voice is probably different too. Yeah, that's a good point. He may not be able to do it anymore. I hadn't even thought of that. Yeah, I had not even considered that, but that's true. I would, I would think and hope that, you know, now that he's a bit older, maybe the Freddy voice would be even better. Uh, but yeah, but it's tough. I, I don't know. I do, And one thing I would also fear is like, you know, what if it's just no good? Because <laughs> it's been, it's, I think somebody pointed out it's been 19 years since he has reprised his role. And um, what if it's just not very good? <laughs> you know? They can use stunt people for the parts that are too hard for him. Yeah, and that's true of literally anything. But also when you, you know, have a full frontal visual or whatever, like if you think of the original movie where it's him chasing Tina down the alleyway, you know, you can, you get a full visual. So that's also kind of hard. It's just, it's just the fact that even doing something as, as simple as running or, I don't know, like if you had to chase somebody up the stairs or anything like that. It's like, those are all your, your, I don't know, I, the percentage of like the likelihood of people falling down goes up dramatically after the age of 70 or something. So I just don't know if that's, if that's worth, <laughs> worth the risk. You think it's just a straight up terrible idea? David Spade, shut up. <laughs> no, thank you. Thanks for the tip, Rob. Freddy chasing kids on a scooter or a walker would <laughs> be hilarious. You'd be excited about him reprising Freddy. Oh. 
by the way, I am drinking my daily liter of tea, but I put ice in it. So it's really nice and iced. I have this, um, I made a blend. I use two different tea bags. I use green tea, but decaffeinated because I just can't do caffeine at all for whatever reason. Um, and then a eucalyptus like throat coat one. It's very nice. Very nice stuff. Hope you guys all have a, have a little drink or a little snack with you. And no, no peanuts today. If you guys were on the last live stream, I was munching on peanuts sometimes and I, I don't have any snacks here. So don't worry. <laughs> don't worry about that. Mm. Okay, so this this is this was to my point I was making earlier. If he's that confident in bringing back Robert as Freddy, they must be in talks. That's what I was saying. I think they must be getting really cl like close to acquiring the rights from the Craven estate. I'm just assuming they must be, right? Because otherwise, why is y'all? Yeah, well, I can get him back. Blah blah blah. Gah, this is so cringy. Oh, do I have any thoughts on the It prequel? Yeah, we're going to get into that. We we will be talking about that news as well. Um, let's see. I've only been live for like 20 minutes, so I think we can talk about Freddy Krueger for a little while longer. Let's give it like five more minutes to drop all your thoughts about that, and then I can move on to some of our other news. Um, we have, yeah, there's just a ton of stuff to talk about today. Uh, Melissa Barrera was cast in a new like thriller TV series, so we're going to get into that. Um, let's see. What else do I have for you? Um, oh yeah, the, the new, new, new casting announcements have been made for Scream 6 as well as for season two of Chucky. So that's interesting. We can get into that and learn a little bit more about the actors and all that. Uh, let's see. American Horror Stories season two is coming next month actually, which is weird because they haven't done any promo for that. Um, there's also a Stephen King, Stephen King's Christine remake which is happening with Blumhouse too. Surprise, surprise. Uh, that was announced a long time ago, but I just never knew about it. So I'm going to talk about that as well. So yeah, we have a lot of stuff to get into. Um, a Peter Dinklage is the new Freddy. Honestly, I would sign up for that. I would really like that. Um, yeah, this is what I'm saying, man. He's being way too cocky and uh, that'll push anyone away. I'm saying it's like, you think I'm that easy to acquire? I've already said that I... Okay, I'm speaking as Robert England. Like, I've already said I don't want to do it. I've said many times I'm too old to return to the role. And this guy is like, oh, I can just... I can get anyone back. He can get me... Like, I can get him back. No big deal. It's like, no. No. Um, We'll see, though. I guess we'll we'll find out. Uh, let's see. I'm a little... I'm a little behind on the chat. My bad. Um... Let's see. Oh my gosh. From Africa. Welcome. Awesome. Um, thanks for being here. I'm doing pretty well today. I hope you're doing well too. I hope everybody's doing well. Okay. Oh, I like this. My, my ideal new nightmare film will be to have Freddie taking different forms. It style with very stylized nightmares. Maybe get England to voice it. That would be so cool. That would be so cool. And then they would only need to bring, you know, Robert England back for, you know, maybe the, maybe the very, like the third act, you know, be kind of like a really big moment, a big reveal or something where he takes his original form just for a scene or two, you know, that'd be super, super cool. Uh, but yeah, it might, it might get a little bit too Pennywise-ish though. Might end up being a little derivative. We'll see. Multiple Freddies, I'm down. Hell yeah. Uh, Oh, thank you for the tip. It wasn't that the it wasn't that he didn't look good in the Goldbergs. It was the makeup. Okay, again, he put the makeup on for a meet and greet right after and was much better. Oh, interesting. Um, I couldn't. I mean, honestly, from like the pictures that I pulled up, let's see. I'll pull it back up again so we can all see. Honestly, like it doesn't. <laughs> okay, it's well, this is a really low resolution picture, so I can't really tell to be honest. Uh, let's see. Let's look at this one. Oh, oh, it, mm, yeah. Okay. Ew, gross. Ew. Why do his eyes look like that? Does that, is that how they, that's not how they always look, is it? No, that can't be. That, no. I need to, okay. I need, ew, I don't, ew, yeah, I don't like it. Ew, I don't like it at all. You can kind of, it, it looks like it's, it's like pulling off his face a bit. It looks like the, the, the prosthetic or mask or whatever it is, is like pulling off his face. Like they didn't apply it properly. Okay. Yeah. I see what you mean now. I do see what you mean. I've, uh, investigated further now. <laughs> okay. 
Um, oh, happy first day of summer. Awesome. Awesome. I don't even think about that. That's great. Does that mean today is going to be the longest day? Like the sun won't set until like nine or something? I guess we'll see. Mm. Let's see. It's 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 ultimately up to Robert England. Don't be ageist. I'm not being ageist. Like, I think it would be great, but I'm just I'm just literally saying, like, a person that age, I just don't I don't see this the physicality being super well, you know? There's nothing ageist about it. It's not like because we're not saying, oh, he shouldn't come back because he's old. It's just like there there are certain things about his physicality that just I don't think it would work out very well. Um, he voices Vecna. He voices Vecna? What? I did not know that. Um, yeah, this is something I wonder as well. I wonder why it's so hard for people to let go of these nostalgic movies. He could do it in the 80s and 90s. We can forever cherish this. There's no purpose in this at all. Yeah. Um, it's just, oh, I missed your super chat. Did I, I, hopefully I scrolled back and I got to it. Oh, because I did, I did pull one of them up, I know. Um, let's see. They can do the same thing like they did with Michael Myers. This is a good point, too. You know, they could, well, it's just, it's just so hard, though, because, like, Freddy does so much speaking. So, I don't know. But, I mean, the technology for all of that and dubbing is getting a lot better. If you've seen the new Top Gun Maverick, which I, probably not, but whatever, uh, Val Kilmer was in it and, you know, in real life, he had a really long, tough battle with throat cancer. And so he doesn't really have a voice anymore. So they used AI technology to put Val Kilmer's voice in the film, um, which was super interesting. And I didn't even notice, like I had no idea until afterwards. And I was just like looking up, you know, IMDb trivia and stuff like that about the movie. Um, and, I, and I found out about that and I was like, that's there's no way. So they could also do something like that, but that's just a whole other logistical nightmare. So I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. Oh, it's a shame we don't know who, who Freddy's father was because Robert could come back and play Freddy's father if we did. That's pretty cool. They could do that anyways. They could just go ahead and do that anyways. That would be, that'd be really cool, actually. Thanks for the tip. Uh, I was just about to suggest multiverses. It's an idea I've always thought about. It wouldn't be too hard. Do something like New Nightmare and Freddy's Dead. Use the dream demons. Yeah, it'd be so cool, right? And then it'd be such a good way for him to, to pass the torch on, you know? Like, you know, you get a new group of kids and they're all dealing with Freddy. And then they they start to, like, compare notes and stuff. And they're like, well, my, my Freddy, you know, my, my Freddy, like, had had a face that looked like you know, melted cheese on a pizza. Oh, well, my Freddy looked like a weird naked mole rat with like a CG face <laughs> or something like that. Obviously not. Like, hopefully it would look a lot better if they did that. But, um, and then, you know, in the showdown, they, there's like a, there's, there's a whole, a whole showdown type of a moment. And then maybe Robert England's Freddy is like officially killed off forever. And then Jackie Earl Haley's Freddy kind of rises up and then it's like, bum, 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 you know? Oh, wow. Tina's chase and death scene is probably your favorite scene in horror. That's crazy. Good choice, though. Good choice. Um, let's see. Oh, they use a pitch shifter for Robert England's voice on some parts for the Elm Street movies. I think I think I remember doing a little bit of research on that. I feel like that was one of my fun facts, like, way back in the day, but I don't remember anything about that. Um... Oh. oh, that's cool. I didn't know you live in Europe. Everyone teases me for uh, drinking most things with ice. That's so American. I know. And I'm like, whenever I go over there, I'll be like, um, you know, like I, I go over to a friend's house or whatever. I'm like, do you have ice? Or they'll be like, do you want water? And I'm like, yeah, can I have it on ice? <laughs> it's like, and, and they're like, oh, okay. I'm like, don't you want to be refreshed? Like it's hot outside. Have you not, have you never had a, a cold one? Huh? That's, that's also one of the worst things. Like, I, at least, like, with my family in Germany, when I visit them, they keep their beers in the fridge, at least, but there's a lot of places you'll go, and they just, like, keep their beers out, and they're lukewarm. Ooh, ooh, it's so gross. It's so bad. Or, like, they'll, they'll come out of the tap, like, if you, if you go to a pub or something, it'll come out of the tap, and it's, like, almost room temperature, like, just a, a slightly chilled, and it's, like, why? Why do you drink like that? 
So whatever, it is so American, but it's just better. Hmm. Okay. I'm a little behind on the chat again. My bad. Uh oh, got let's see, I got a couple tips that I missed. My bad. Um Okay, thank you. I'm 31 and I fall a lot. Do doctors call me a fall risk. If you think he uh, can't still do the voice, watch the Goldbergs. Also, isn't Brad Dorf in his 70s voicing Chucky? Well, I think, no, I think he could do the voice. Um, even Earlier, I even said, like, I think that he could he could potentially do it even better now. Because, like, typically when you get older, your voice does get a little bit deeper and a little raspier. So, I think that he could do it probably better now. Um, and, like, yeah, Brad Dorf, I mean... I hope that he he always voices Chucky. I really hope. Ugh. Did I enjoy Chucky season one? Yes, I did. I did. Oh, Christine, is that true? I'm an enthusiast. Um, we'll get into it. Maybe I can talk about that next. I'll talk about the Christine remake next. Thank you for the tip, George. If you could pick anyone to play Freddy, England, Jackie, etc., who would you pick and why? So if if one of them had to reprise their roles, um, I've already said that I would want Jackie Earl Haley. Uh, but and it's also like a lot of other people mentioned his performance seemed to just kind of be tainted by like how the the rest of the movie was so bad. And also they used a lot of CGI and you know like he said I I always say he just he looks like a mole rat like he just looks disgusting in that movie and not in a good way. Uh, so I think if you fix all those things and you put him in a better movie, like he is such a disturbing Freddy. If I were to get somebody new in the role, I don't even know, man. I really like the idea of putting Jamie Campbell Bauer in the role. That'd be super cool. Like, he is so good as Vecna. He's so good as Vecna. So, let's see. Let's see. Oh, okay, okay. Good point, good point by Desi. I am excited at the small prospect that if he acquired the rights to Friday the 13th and Nightmare on Elm Street, we could get a crossover with Halloween that would be insane. Like, talk about multiverses, right? Oh, God, that would be... You know, and I think at some point in history, even even if, like, there's no more hype for these franchises, at some point, like, there will be a way that they'll live on. At some point, there will be some kind of crossover. Maybe there's already, like, a fan film that exists, but I think at some point that'll happen. I do. Um, all right. I think, okay, we have we have George in the chat. We're talking about Chucky season two. Not sure where they're going to take the characters. I think for now, okay, I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm going to end up missing some chats just because it's really active today, which I really appreciate, but I can't get to all of them. Sorry about that. Thank you for the tip. Freddy's father is Alice Cooper. He was in Freddy's Dead. That's right. Oh my God. Freddy's Dead was just, oh God. I feel like a lot of us have maybe kind of collectively wiped that movie from our memory just because Freddy's Dead is so bad. Um, but I forgot. Oh my gosh. Alice Cooper. What a guy. What a guy. Um, <laughs> naked mole rat. Not Rufus from Kim Possible. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking about. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, let's see. Um... Yeah, Jackie was good, just bad makeup. I'm saying, I'm saying. Multiverse would kind of be sick as fuck. Yeah, I would agree. <clears throat> yeah, I and I think this is probably the best route and what will probably end up actually happening. Uh, but they, they should get someone who looks similar to Robert and his Freddy's character like they did with the new Halloween. I would agree with that. I think the only reason why it's just so tricky and why there's so much discourse is because you know, Robert England made the character. It is such a strong character, whereas, like, Michael and Jason are just under a mask, which is why it was so easy to keep those franchises going, because, like, you can just get somebody different every time. It doesn't really matter too much. Um, whereas with Freddy, it's, like, he he's, he's such a strong character, um, which is, you know, it's just tough. Do we know if it's supposed to be a reboot or a sequel? Um, I don't know. I mean, it would end up being a requel, I'm sure, you know. Um, let's see. Okay. I think, I think now is probably going to be the best time to start getting into some of the other news. Cause we have been talking about this for a little over a half hour. Um, oh, Corey's here. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, hitting the like button helps me out a lot. Oh, thank you, Desi. Freddy's dead is like Bruno. We don't talk about it. Oh God. Would you guys, okay. Would you hate me if I said I haven't seen Encanto yet? Ah, 
Oops. I haven't seen it yet. Oh, yeah. Okay. Willem Dafoe. I would not be mad at Willem Dafoe uh, being Robert England, but I don't really see him. I don't really see him in a traditional horror movie. Like, I love Willem Dafoe. Um, and all and all his wacky stuff he's been doing lately, like in The Northman and The Lighthouse. I'm like, just keep working with Robert Eggers, you know? But I don't know if I could see him in a, a Nightmare on Elm Street movie. I just don't know about that. Okay. Oh, you wonder if Zac Efron would make a good No. No, he would not. I don't know if I could really see Zac Efron playing a villain ever. Um, he like He's talented, but I don't think he has that kind of range. I don't know about that. Uh, yes. Okay. This is, I think this was kind of to Desi's point earlier. Would we be interested in a team up of horror movie villains similar to Justice League or the Avengers? I love how you phrase that. Like you said, would we be interested? Yes. I think that we would. Um, I think we would. Uh, yeah. Cause I would love that. Like if they acquire the rights to all, all of the big three, you know, and there was like a huge crossover, I'd be so down. I'd be so down with that. Oh, thanks for bringing the good vibes to the chat. I hope everyone has a fun and safe day filled with tons of love and positivity. I appreciate that so much. Thank you. Um, oh my God, Joaquin Phoenix? <sighs> Dude, okay, if, you, if you're if you not sure if he would be comical enough, it's hard to say because of where he's at in his career right now. And even when he accepted the Oscar for Best Actor, like, I, I appreciate that he did this a lot, but, you know, he took the opportunity during his speech to be like, you know, a lot of people came here in private jets and like we, the people with money really need to hold ourselves accountable because like climate change is a real thing. So I don't know if like he's really in a humorous place in his life right now, but if you've ever seen Signs, he is so funny in that movie. He's, he is the comedic relief in that movie. So it's not that he couldn't do it. It's just that like, I don't know if he, I don't know if he's in a place like in his own, like in his personal real life to take on that kind of role. There, there is a little bit of humor in the Joker though. There is some humor in Joker, but it's like, it's very nihilistic, dry kind of humor. It's not, it's not like, I don't know. How would you describe Robert England's humor as Freddy? Like, cause some part, like as the franchise went on, it got kind of slapsticky and a little bit cartoonish, but like, I don't know. It was just, he just was very coy and like witty and just would toy with his victims, you know? Oh, thanks for the tip. You have to watch Watcher with Mika Monroe if you haven't watched it yet. Yes, absolutely. I'm so glad somebody brought this up. Um, yeah, I rated it five stars. I literally gave it a perfect score on Letterboxd. Um, I already rambled about it over on Patreon. If you are a member or you can sign up links down below, uh, the lowest tier is five bucks a month and you get bonus content over there. And yeah, it was a perfect movie to me. Um, I'm going to be talking about it a lot during my June wrap up. I didn't give it a solo review, but yeah, Make a Monroe, oh, my, my queen. I love her. Mm. Okay. Oh my gosh. Oh, good point. I'm sorry. I keep meaning to move on, but like, the actor who played Art the Clown might make a good Freddy. Yeah, what is his name? David Thor? No, that's not right at all, is it? It's something, I don't know. It's something like that. I think there's Thorn in his name, but yes, I would agree with that. Okay, I see that we get on to the next bit of news here. Oh, and Ryan just got here. Good stuff, good stuff. Popping in on your break. Awesome, love to hear that. Uh, Freddy's Krueger is more like a playful cat playing with their food. Yes. Okay. So that's, yeah, that's pretty much to my point as well. Um, okay. So let's see what we're going to talk about next. Oh, we were going to do, we were going to talk about the Christine remake. So I actually haven't fully read this article yet, um, but we're, we're, we'll just get into it together. I'll just skim it with you guys and we'll see what's up. So one thing to note though, is that this article was published over a year ago, just about a year ago on June 8th of 2021. Uh, but it, it says very plainly, like, Sony Pictures and Blumhouse are teaming up to make a new movie based on Stephen King's seminal classic, Christine. And, and they're doing it with, uh, one of the Hannibal creators, which, if you don't know, Hannibal, the TV show starring Mads Mikkelsen, um, and What's-His-Face and What's-His-Face. And Gillian Anderson, amazing cast, basically. Amazing show. So, that gives me a little bit of hope. So, yeah, it's getting rebooted. Let's see. Oh, Brian Fuller is on board to direct. If you guys don't know who Brian Fuller is, I've talked about him a bit on my channel, especially when I'm doing my original verse remake comparisons. Um, he is essentially, it would seem, one of Michael Bay's most prominent partners because if you, like, 
like you're you're probably mostly aware of the fact that like Michael Bay produced so many early 2000s remakes. He did a Nightmare on Elm Street, or yeah, he did a Nightmare on Elm Street. He did Friday the Thirteenth. Um, he did Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and uh, Friday the Thirteenth and and Texas Chainsaw were also both directed by the same person. And all of those Bra Brian Full or wait. Brian or, or Brad? His names are too similar. Am I mixing this person up? Hold on. Let's click this. Let's find out. Um, I think I'm mixing. I think I'm mixing people up, and not me rambling about it like I knew what I was talking about. I think I'm mixing people up. But okay, so he he worked on Hannibal, which essentially that's that's all I care about. Listen, that is all I care about. Um, oh wait, am I am I sharing the wrong thing? No, no, I am. I'm good. Okay. Um. Okay, let, let's just get into this arc. Let's find out what's going on. So anyways, they want to have it set in the 80s still, which will be faithful to the source material. And of course, Jason Blum will be producing. Um, Blumhouse has acquired the rights. So yeah, um, it's, not, it's not clear at this time if King is personally involved. I doubt he will be. I actually, I don't know his thoughts on the original adaptation, but like by the community, Christine is hailed as one of the best, like most faithful uh, Stephen King adaptations. I do know that. Um, let's see. So Fuller comes with some experience as a filmmaker in the horror genre. Yes, he is well known for adapting the story of the Silence of the Lambs, uh, which, yep, with Mads Mikkelsen, absolutely. And he's worked on all of these shows. Okay, so I was definitely talking about the wrong guy. Brian, Brian Fuller and Brad Fuller are apparently different people. <laughs> That's my bad. Um, okay, let me just, let me just catch up on the chat. Let's see, let's see if we got any thoughts from anybody here. Oh, thank you. Thanks for the tip. Um, oh, David Howard Thornton. I was kind of close with his name, wasn't I? I was kind of close with the name. Okay. Uh, let's see. You think Christine makes sense as a franchise? Okay, they destroyed the car, but couldn't kill what possessed it. That's a good point. That's a good point. It always comes back. It can just, it can like heal itself. So that's true. Um, oh, they're going through with that prequel for X. Hmm. Could be amazing. Could be, could be X, uh, X really let me down. So not sure. Michael Bay is a very odd specimen. I would hard agree with that. Hard agree with that. The epitome of like chauvinist, you know, just like early 2000s let's objectify women behavior it's odd guy mm. oh goodness gracious a bot in the chat we don't love that um oh thank you thanks for the tip no no comment though okay uh let's see oh hills have eyes was good too did he do that one as well oh my gosh i didn't know Oh, yeah. I can't wait for the Hellraiser remake. A trans woman playing Pinhead is amazing. Yes, we love that. We love that. I'm very excited for that, except that I still, we, I think we talked about this in my last live as well. I still have not watched the entire franchise yet, so. Oh, I don't know why they haven't done a, a Stephen King shared movie universe yet. Well, okay, so this is a, a really tricky thing because the past, he's probably been trying to do this over like the past decade or so, but Stephen King has very slowly been trying to reacquire all of the rights to like his original work. So you saw this happen with Pet Cemetery, and I talked about this a lot in my original verse remake video, but um, essentially he, you know, you have to give two years notice before you can fully reacquire the rights. And so he w was starting to try to get the rights back to Pet Cemetery from Paramount um, in like 2017 or something. So then that's why they put a remake into a rush production. Cause they were like, Oh shit. Like we still have the rights, but they're going to get rid of them. Might as well like milk this while, while we can. So, you know, back in his early days, Stephen King was just like selling off the rights and green lighting, like essentially anything. Um, and if you're aware of just how many different Stephen King adaptations there are between like movies and TV shows and limited series, it's, I can't even imagine, you know, having the end goal of trying to reacquire the rights to all of your stuff. If I was Stephen King, just with the, the sheer amount of stuff he's done. So that is probably why, because the rights to all his stuff are just so scattered. Uh, but you know, um, we'll, we'll see. I think, I, I think his intention with re reacquiring the rights is probably just like, 
I don't know. It's a mess now. He probably wants to have a little bit more control. Also probably wants to, you know, leave, leave the rights to his family, you know, set up his family for generations and generations and all of that stuff. So, you know, who knows? Maybe at some point far in the future, you know, his son, uh, Joe Hill, like maybe he'll decide one day that he wants to take all the, the, the rights that they have and do something like that. But who knows? Who knows? But yeah, any any thoughts on the Christine remake? Because like, I I liked the original Christine. I think I only gave it like three stars though. I wasn't crazy about it, but it's one that I would definitely give a rewatch. Um, let's see. Hopefully, it will be better than the awful Firestarter remake. Yeah, that remake was terrible. That was uh, really terrible. Oh yeah, the, de, okay, this is something I'll definitely look into for next time. I want updates on the Blumhouse, Dracula, Wolfman, and Frankenstein. Yeah, they were, okay. So one thing I do know about this, though, is that, uh, I don't know. So essentially, they decided to start with um, The Mummy, right? I don't know, if, was Blumhouse involved back then? Because Universal was going to be remaking all of their... <clears throat> like, original classic monster movies, and so they started with The Mummy, uh, in 2017 with Tom Cruise, and if you guys saw that movie or heard any word of mouth marketing about it, you would know it was so bad. I saw it, and let me tell you, it was, <coughs> it was, <coughs> it was so bad. I inhaled a little bit of spit. Sorry. Oh, it was so bad. So essentially, the the negative reception of the Mummy from 2017 is what led them to basically like cancel the rest of those plans. And so everything about the new Universal Monster Cinematic Universe, like it was supposed to be a really big thing. And I think that's why they, you know, shelled out and cast Tom Cruise. And I think Russell Crowe was in that movie. I don't know why the movie ended up being so bad. Jake Johnson is also in that movie, like a comedy actor. One of my favorite actors, though, quite honestly. I love that man. And he's really funny in the movie, but like his whole comedic relief situation was bizarre. Uh, so anyway, as far as I know, those plans are, you know, they, they've still been derailed. Like, I don't know if they ever plan on, you know, getting back into that. I'm sure they will at some point. Because, like, those are re that's a really big franchise to tap into that could be done really well now, you know, that it's been almost 100 years since those original movies came out. You know, it, it would be really interesting to give them a modern retelling. And, like, granted, there are hundreds of Dracula movies, so that's the one I'd probably be least excited about. But I'd be really, really interested on a modern-day Frankenstein take, you know? It could be something really dark and disturbing and like gross or it could be just a really good tribute and they could keep it faithful to the time period i don't know you think christine will be dope you think the remake will be interesting one of john carpenter's better movies you know what i went to um the event that i can't remember what company was putting it on but essentially they were showing the thing for its 42nd anniversary so they, they were showing it on Sunday, then they're showing it again on Wednesday. So I went on Sunday and it was a really good time, but apparently there was kind of a lot of drama and like controversy surrounding this whole event because uh, the company that put it on, and for the life of me, I cannot remember now who it was. Um, I think that on the JBlow website, I think they actually wrote an article about it, but I can't remember. Or maybe it was on Bloody Disgusting. I think it was actually on Bloody Disgusting. Let me just, um, I'll see if I can find it really quick. Oh yeah. Okay. Essentially, I'm sorry, I know I'm getting a little bit derailed, but this is still relevant horror movie news. Um, oh, and also on this note, seeing the thing in the theater, oh, it was great. I had a great experience, but apparently a lot of people didn't. And so there was just this whole, a whole hullabaloo. Oh, the Black Phone has come out in a couple days. Also, you should go see that. Um, Fathom Events, that's who it was, it was a disaster, but they're making it right for Wednesday night. So I forget why, but like I saw somebody on Twitter too that was talking about how um, at their screening, they didn't have, um, like, a restored digital version of the movie, and for whatever reason, whatever format they were uh, projecting it on, it had a weird, like, a red line on the, on the left side, and there was a blue line on the right side, and it was all fuzzy and seemed, like, out of focus, um, so let's see what they, what they wrote about, um, 
The film, for starters, presented in the wrong aspect ratio. See, that's huge as well. Um, well, somebody, uh, I think that this is the person I saw on Twitter. I will never, ever see a Fathom event again. I recommend that you avoid them like the plague. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, yeah, okay, so this is, this is definitely what I saw. Yeah, so they showed it in the wrong aspect ratio, literally cutting out a third of the film. Uh, the picture was soft focus, low resolution, and the digital image was out of registration, so all the objects were rimmed in red on one side and blue on the other. Oh my gosh. And all the movement all the way through the movie stuttered, like trying to watch Netflix with a really bad Wi-Fi signal. And it, yeah, he was just going off. They should be ashamed of themselves and the outrageously low quality programs they run. Yeah, so um, essentially, the, the Fathom was not provided with a digital cinema package for their theatrical showing of The Thing this past Sunday. So um, yeah, it was just this whole hullabaloo. Sorry, I know that's a little bit random, but um, I did end up going to one of the screenings. And it it definitely, like the at the screening that I saw, it definitely was not like a restored digital version. It didn't look great, but I don't think that our theater was having all those same kind of problems. Um, so I'm not sure. But some of it might've been cut off. I don't know. I've, I've, I've seen the thing like, I think four times now, but even so, seeing it in a, in a theater is different, so I don't know if it if ours was, like, cut off in the wrong aspect ratio or something, but anyway. Mm. Yeah, um, thank you. There's so many people in the chat now. I'm so impressed with how much. Thank you. I really appreciate that. You know, me too. Me too. Um, oh, interesting. They're going to make Christina an electric car as a social commentary. That would be interesting and different. I think that would actually be a way to do a remake right, even if you're joking, like even if this is sarcasm, um, I, I honestly think that that would be an interesting choice. I do. Because then it would also, I don't know, give a little more rhyme and reason. They could also play around with that. Like if it had, you know, uh, some kind of solar panel built into the top of the car and then the car could kind of charge itself up and do even more destruction, the more charged up it is or something like that. I don't know. Hello. Welcome. Welcome. Oh yeah. We can talk about Welcome to Dairy now too as well. I wonder if it'll have several seasons and not only be an it story. One season can be dream catcher and another season can be pet cemetery. More than one story story in dairy. I would love that as well. Yeah, that'd be really cool. I don't really know. Honestly, I don't really know how else you could do a pet cemetery story. Like they already remade it and it was essentially just the exact same thing. Um, but I don't know. I don't know. We can tell. Oh, yeah, because uh, welcome to Dairy. I don't. I don't have like a particular article or anything that I. Uh, I don't that I wanted to pull up. Um, yeah, no, I don't think I have anything here. Um, but yeah, essentially, I just saw that there was an announcement that they are going to be moving forward with the Welcome to Dairy TV show prequel that's going to be coming to HBO Max, which I just think is really exciting. We we had talked about that. A little while ago, I think it was a couple months ago, I just, I found an article that they were in talks to be doing this. And then I saw um, this article that said that they are moving ahead because one of the writers teased that the writer's room is now open. So it's in the very, very early stages of production. I mean, it was really cute. I don't know if I could, I don't think I could find it on Twitter, but um, let's see. Welcome to Dairy Writer's Room. Because there's like a really cute picture that, that somebody shared. Oh, oh, I think I just found it. Um, and they posted, I did, I found it. Look at me go. Look at me go. Okay. I'll share it. Share screen. Yes, please. Okay. There it is. So, so somebody shared this, uh, first day of welcome to dairy writer's room. We float down here and it's just so cute. Like in the office, like in the writer's room, they just put up a bunch of red balloons, which I think is so cute and festive. And it's just a really cute way to do the marketing. So I was really on board with that. I just, I thought that was cute. I wanted to share. Oh, oh my gosh. I need to crack my back. Sorry. Oh, not on that side. Okay, interesting. Interesting. All right. <laughs> what horror movie would I want to be in? I would want to be in any kind of stoner-centric slasher. It's really fun to die on screen. Um, only done it once. I can only assume that it's always fun, but yeah, I think something like that. I'd really want to be in a slasher because it's not like I can, I can act. Listen, I can act, but I can't really act. So I think it'd be fun to be in a slasher. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, the chat is so active. I'm sorry. I'm going to, I'm going to end up being so behind. Okay. 
let me just, I'll just kind of skim through these a little, a little bit quickly here. Do I think they'll ever do a Sleepaway Camp remake or requel? Uh, perhaps. It's just a really basic story, so I don't, I don't know if I'd see them revisiting that. Like, it's just, it's just been done, you know? Okay. Let's see. They are going to, they're going to make Christine as an artificial intelligence car. Oh, oh, like they did with Chucky. Shoot. Yeah, I didn't even finish going through that article, did I? Did I? I know, my, that's my bad. Uh, but let's see. Um, I don't know. I'm not going to share the screen again, just because like there, there isn't really much else in the article. Um, and also, actually, no, because Stephen King apparently did speak up about this. So I am going to, I am going to share the screen again, actually. Because we'll, because then we'll just finish up talking about Christine. Um, so there's never been any kind of a sequel. King did speak about the possibility once, but he was not excited about the idea of doing Christine too. Uh, I don't want to go through that again. Once was enough. All I can think of would be if the parts are recycled, you'd end up with this sort of homicidal, homicidal cuisine art or something like that. That'd be kind of nice. Um, yeah. So no release date by Sony or Blumhouse. So, yeah, uh, no idea. There's not too much going on. Doesn't seem like Stephen King would be super into that either. So that is what it is. But, yeah, I mean, if you guys, if you guys, like, find another article, I just couldn't find anything very recent about it. So you'd be down for a remake? Okay. I mean, I would be down, I guess. It's not something I'm itching for, but they, they could, they could make it interesting and topical to, you know, today's world. I just hope that it wouldn't you know, have too much involvement with, you know, making it kind of like a Tesla situation because they did, they did, they did that for uh, the child's play remake, you know, where they used artificial intelligence. And then that whole movie was kind of like making a commentary about Amazon, which is like, I don't mind that. Um, I wish that movie had been better, but I don't mind that. I just hope, I would hope that a Christine remake wouldn't just essentially end up being the same thing, you know? Mm. let's see you're still hoping for a sequel to the thing directed by john carpenter i don't think it needs a sequel honestly i don't think it does yes okay okay the mummy with tom cruise is like trying to start the mcu with captain america but adding too many setup easter eggs yeah exactly like they didn't take the time to just to just just make one good movie and just let it be a good standalone it was like oh it was a little too big for its britches it's a little bit too much Mm. oh yeah and the invisible man was supposed to be in the shared universe that's right because the invisible man, the invisible man was one of the original monsters right yeah that's true although the invisible man is it's just such a standalone like i mean i'd be really interested to see how it could ever possibly connect to you know a larger universe but it would have to be a prequel because of, you know, reasons. So, I don't know about that. I don't know. Let's see. Oh, geez. I'm so behind in the chat. Okay. I just can't get to everybody. I feel bad. Like, I want to get to every single one of them. But I just can't do it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for the tip. Um, I just realized Chris Jericho would be a good Freddy. He's the right age, height, and rocks a fedora. <laughs> He's a wrestler as well. An actor. Physicality wouldn't be a problem. And also he has charisma. Those are all the ingredients. Those are definitely all the ingredients for a good Freddy. So I could be on board with that. Sorry, my throat is just starting to hurt a little bit. Oh, hey, welcome. You found my channel the other day. Awesome. Have I seen the new found footage film dash cam? I have. And I will also be talking about that quite a bit during my June wrap up, which is coming in just about a week. So yeah, I'll be talking about that a lot very soon. I'm also, I'm trying this new thing where I, I mean, obviously for Patreon, I always take a video of my initial thoughts, like my initial reaction to a movie. And so that's there. But then I also decided that I would write my monthly wrap ups as the month is going along instead of like leaving that till the end of the month. Cause that's what I would do. I would wait to write, you know, and my scripts end up being so long. My June wrap up is going to be very long, I fear. Um, but yeah, it's because I have a new, 
a new system. I'm going to write it like as I go, which just, you know, maybe that's common sense for a lot of people, but I just got here. So thank you. Thank you, Wellmeister. Those red balloons remind me of when I saw it 27 th 2017 in theaters. That's so cool if your theater did like a cool, you know, promo decoration kind of a thing. Because my theater didn't do anything like that. I wish they would, but they, they should have like put up red balloons and stuff. Maybe it's because I didn't go on an opening night or anything. I think I went the opening week though in 2017 for sure. But alas. Um, oh, for your back, I suggest heat patches. I'm okay. I just have a really, really uncomfortable chair. Um, I have it on my Amazon wish list. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna shell out and get a new chair. Uh, well, maybe not anytime soon, soon, but like, maybe I'll get some birthday money, you know? Mm. Oh, yeah. Megan Killer Doll by Blumhouse. I'm really, really excited for this one. Yeah, I'm excited, but I haven't looked too much into it just because I don't want any spoilers. Like, I don't want to know too much about it going in, you know? Um, also, I feel like I'm touching my hair a lot. I'm just having a really weird hair day. I, you could probably tell I'm trying to grow out my bangs. Um, and it's just like, it's just a really weird experience. It's, I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it. I don't know what to do with them. Um, but yeah, anyway, I'm just like nervously touching them a lot. My bad. Oh my Lord. Okay. The more content, the merrier. Amazing. Yeah. That's, that's how I think about it. Just because I, I love long form content. Like I'll see a movie that's an hour and 40 minutes and I'm like, but then somebody uploads an hour and a half long YouTube video that's like a super long video essay. And I'm like, ooh, yum, delicious. <laughs> I don't know if you guys feel the same way. Cause I feel like, I don't know. Cause a lot of movie reviewers, they, they'll post like 10 minute long reviews. And I'm like, no, I gotta do, I gotta do my research. I gotta find interviews. I gotta talk about all my spoiler free stuff. I gotta go through the whole plot. Like I just like to talk about everything. Um, Thank you. Thanks for the tip. There was kind of a Sleepaway Camp requel back in 2008 called Return to Sleepaway Camp and has a lot of returning actors and characters from the first. Oh, including Felissa Rose. The Wellmeister, listen, <laughs> if anybody talks about like, oh, would you want to see a sequel for this? Whatever. The Wellmeister just comes up and he's like, well, actually, there are eight sequels to this and this one, blah, blah, blah. Like he's just got, he's got like an encyclopedia up here. I swear to God. It's always lovely just having you in the chat. Mm. let's see I feel like we are due to a great or due for a great modern Dracula and Frank Frankenstein adaptations go back to the original novels yeah that's what I'm saying I would love to see that um let's see would you <laughs> okay <laughs> What would you do if you were stuck in a room with Rob Zombie? Would you try to find some rationale behind the bad filmmaking? Listen, I don't, it's not that I don't think that he's like a rational person. I'm sure he's a cool person. Um, well, okay. I'm not sure of that just because his taste is horrible, but you know, I, I'm, I don't think I would have a difficult time having a conversation with the guy. I definitely would have questions, you know, like, why do you do the things you do? I don't know. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I would like to have a conversation with a guy. Sure. I feel like, you know, he's cool. I like a lot of his music actually. Um, cause he did, he did, he did a couple songs in a uh, bride of Chucky that I adore. And so, you know, we would have common ground. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Mm. Okay. Listen, yeah, I know. I uh, the bots are coming back. I know I need mods. I do. It's we've been talking about this for a while. I just uh, I procrastinate on certain tasks. It just it just happens. Uh, okay, so let's see. We talked. Okay, we already talked a little bit about Welcome to Dairy. Uh, we've talked about Christine. So I'm not going to go back to those. Uh, we've talked a little bit about the Thing theatrical release. Let's see. Um, what else are we missing? We talked about A Nightmare on Elm Street. Uh, there's, oh, there's new movies that, that are coming up soon that I wanted to talk about, but I guess now we could maybe talk a little bit about the new Scream 6 cast. Um, that's something we haven't gotten into yet, as well as the new Chucky Season 2 cast. 
Oh, but I got a tip. So a really quick. Thank you. Thank you for that. I have no thought on the Christine remake. I'm not a car guy. That Stephen King shared universe sounds awesome. I mean, Kurt Barlow and those aliens from Dreamcatcher and the same thing. The horror. I'm in. Yeah, and I still have not seen Dreamcatcher yet. So no spoilers in the chat, please. Uh, but yeah, I, I mean, I'm just not, I'm not super big on... I've noticed I'm not super big on a lot of Stephen King stuff. Like, I don't really have any kind of feelings towards Christine. The original movie is is fine. It's fun. Um, great effects and stuff. I think it's it's definitely good work by Carpenter. But just, you know, I'm just impartial, I guess. You know? Uh, would love to be a mod for you. I know. I have a couple people in the chat. Like, I know you guys would be golden as mods. So don't worry. I, I will keep you in mind for that. But let's see. So let's 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 talk about the new cast for Scream Six, okay? Because I don't know anything about it. So this is actually my reaction to to them uh, making these announcements. So let's see. We have. I'm not. I'm not going to read their names because I literally don't know who they are. I don't know who any of these people are, which is fine because they cast a lot of people that we didn't know for Scream 2022. So that's not my concern. Um, I'm just, I am just very indifferent because I'm like, who are these people? <laughs> who are they? I don't know. Um, I think it's an interesting choice. You would think like, I don't know. I used to think, oh, well, surely they'll try to cast Samara Weaving or something because, you know, it's the, the ready or not guys. And, you know, it, she's such an underrated horror icon. Honestly, she's just the dark comedy queen. Um, but... They went this way. So yeah, so everybody's returning. Hayden Panettiere is returning. Um, let's see. So do they have any info about these people? I don't know if they do. Oh, okay. So one of them is can be seen in his next breakout role in the next Avatar. Okay, so that's what he's from. So he is actually like about to be a big star, but that's just why we don't know him yet. Um, let's see. Vanderbilt will produce, blah, blah, blah. Okay. They, they don't have any actual information about these actors. Okay. So one of them was also in a production called Totally Killer for Amazon. She's repped by, what, okay, who cares? Um, and then Nekoda was most recently seen in Sneakerella. What the hell is that? Okay. So like they're up and coming people, you know, they've been in some big stuff, but just no idea who they are. So would love to know your thoughts on that. Um, if you are happy about it, if you're disappointed, whatever, just let me know. So, like, I guess all these people are going to be in Scream. So, that's that's news. Um, let's see. Chucky Season 2 has a new cast. Well, they, they announced, like, I mean, they're having everybody return, but then, obviously, like, th they usually will add new characters every season to, like, any show. So, yeah, they, they, they did announce some new cast members. One of them is apparently Jennifer Tilly's sister, um, and I, they were acting like it was a really big deal. And I think Jennifer Tilly posted about it. Uh, I don't think Mancini did, but yeah. So like a bunch of, I don't know, a bunch of the Chucky crew was posting about it. And the new cast was posting about how they've been announced to be in the new season. And it's like, okay, cool. But like, I don't know who you are. Like, I don't know who they are either. So let's see. Oh, you don't like the Scream 6 cast? Okay. I haven't heard of any of them. And while, this, while the Scream sequels have historically cast popular actors who can draw in an audience, I'm afraid it'll flop. Yeah, that's a good point, too. Because it's also like, ugh, Nev Campbell isn't coming back, and now we don't know any of these people. <laughs> like, But I, I think that there is enough of a draw to have, like, you know, Mindy and Chad Meeks coming back, Tara and Sam coming back, um, and Courtney Cox, and especially Kirby, you know? So I think that there is already enough of a draw. Maybe they felt like it would be too much if they added other stars on top of that. Though you are right about that, you know? Thinking back to it. And like, come on, Jennifer Jolie in Scream 3. Come on, that woman made that movie. Like, come on, you know? Anyway. <laughs> I love long form content. I clean to it. Dude, I do the same thing. I do the same thing. Because, like, I don't know, once a month, I'll fully, like, deep clean and, like, dust my entire room, you know? Like, I'll pull out my desk, my bed, whatever, everything. And I just I just keep, you know, YouTube content on the on, oh, on in the background. I'm really tripping up on my words today. I don't know what's going on. Mm. 
Just happy for Kirby. Nice. Scream 5 better than Scream 6. I'm calling it. I have a feeling you might be right. Like, I'm not really expecting the same kind of quality for Scream 6, you know? Which I feel like is valid. I don't, I don't feel like we necessarily need to be quite as excited for Scream 6 as we were for Scream 5. Sorry. And Okay. All right. We'll just stay there then. Fine. Um, let's see. Okay. So, you know, one of the, one of the new cast members, interesting. She's in a horror mystery show called Light as a Feather. Okay. Interesting. Didn't know, did not know that. But yeah, I just literally had not seen those people in anything before. You're just happy for Kirby. Fair enough. Fair enough. I hope Blumhouse won't ruin Christine with the bad writing. I guess we'll find out. Though, I have not heard anything about it since. I'm like, I haven't been able to find a more up-to-date article about it. So, I don't know. Um, maybe I just wanted more rep, but am I the only one who thought Amber and Tara were going to be dating? No, you're not alone in that. Uh, but maybe we'll get to see Mindy being a little bit more gay in Scream 6. Maybe they'll give her a girlfriend, you know? Maybe one of those actors they cast for Scream 6 is going to be her girlfriend. Who knows? Hmm. Oh, speaking of Chucky, too, yeah. Somehow Devin Sawa is cast again. Um, I don't want to spoil the first season, though, but, like, it doesn't really make sense for him to be <laughs> coming back, but we'll see. We'll find out. Mm. Okay, this is a positive take. The only member of the Scream 6 cast I recognize is Jenna Ortega. I do believe the new cast can and will be a breath of fresh air for the franchise. That's a good thought to have. I feel like I, you know, trust them with casting, uh, I wish there was a little bit more diversity, but they did a good job with Scream 5 and all the newcomers they brought on were really good, except I did not like Amber. And that was her breakout role. Like, she hadn't really done much before that, I don't think. And uh, it kind of showed a little bit, just a little bit. But these other actors, it seems like they've been in other, like, pretty big stuff before. Especially that one guy that was apparently in Avatar. So, you know, good for him. Uh, Oh my god, I would take Devin Sawa in a Scream movie with Samara Weaving. Ah! Oh! I'd freak out. I'd freak out. Yeah. That'd be... That would... Oh! That'd be the ultimate goal. You know what? Devin Sawa and uh, Sarah Michelle Gellar and Freddie Prince Jr. That's who I would want to see. And Linda Cardellini. Bring back, just bring back the whole Scooby-Doo gang, you know? Um, <laughs> your boyfriend, Devin Sawa. Yeah, I had a little bit of a fixation on Devin Sawa for a little while there. Now it's Mads Mikkelsen. Um, but yeah, that's true. You know what? Devin Sawa is still is my boyfriend, but whatever. <laughs> I need to stop. I need to stop being that weird on the internet. I just shouldn't say that anymore. Um, yeah, this, I agree with this. Yeah, the reason for Nev not coming back sucks, but I don't think we need Sydney for a Scream film. Let the woman be happy as a parent. Exactly. I don't want to mess up her character arc in any way. Like, just let her live. You know, she's done so much for the franchise, and, you know, within the universe, she's done so much for everybody in Scream. Like, just let her live and be happy now, you know? I've said that many times, though. Um, let's see. Uh, the new, um, the, okay, the, the new actor that's an avatar doesn't play a major role in the movie, and, like, the avatar characters, they're not really people, but CGI. I doubt anybody's gonna recognize him. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, the, the article just, like, proclaimed him as having a breakout role in Avatar. I don't know anything about Avatar, honestly, so. <laughs> um, thank you. Thanks for the tip. Meg Tilly, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I think it's been a while since they've worked together. She does horror, too. Remember the invasion of the Body Snatchers talk last last stream that she's in the 93 remake oh interesting yeah i don't know anything about her sister's filmography i didn't even know she had a sister honestly until it was announced so yeah and honestly i don't think i'm gonna try to track down an article for uh chucky season two just because i don't know any of the actors like it's not it's not great news to me like i don't really care that much <laughs> i'm just excited to see the returning characters you know as always Especially Jennifer Tilly and Brad Dorif and Fiona Dorif and um, who else? And even like the returning kids, you know, in the cast. Um, oh, 
Yeah, yeah. Freddie Prince Jr. and Sarah Michelle Gellar are both the night. And that is how they met. That's how they met. And it's so cute because they've been married like since 2000 or something crazy. I don't know. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Excuse me. Weird Kylie is the best Kylie. Eh, thank you. <laughs> uh yeah this is true just because she won't be in scream six doesn't mean she won't be back for scream seven this is true this is true i just don't think she needs to come back i mean she could come back for like a scene and just be like hi i'm sydney i'm here and i'm fine this is how i survived it now you can go survive it and then she can just go live that's you know that would be okay let's see the only thing what else have we not talked about today Oh, there was, I wanted to talk about this movie coming up that has my interest peaked. Um, it is being produced by and starring Nicole Kidman. I'll pull up this article that I found on this amazing website that I think is going to be my new go-to for horror news, Joe Blow. Just I've never heard of it before. So the, the movie, as I understand it, is called Holland, Michigan. And it is described as a Hitchcockian thriller, which is really cool. Um, Let's see. Oh, oh, yes. And it's this is why I wanted to talk about it because it's going to be directed by Mimi Cave. And she is the woman that did Fresh, which I loved Fresh. And that was pretty, like, pretty universally loved. Um, didn't see a lot of people that didn't like that one. So I'm really, really excited about it. It's a Hitchcockian thriller called Holland, Michigan, which Kidman will also be producing with Persari through her company Blossom Films. Okay. Let's see. Um, apparently it's, I guess it's been a long time in the making. It's, uh, taken a slow journey to the screen. Project started out with a screen, a screenplay by Andrew Sadrowski, creator of Manhunt. I've never seen that. Okay. That was featured on the Blacklist. Oh, I think my dad watches Blacklist. <laughs> um, it involves, uh, involves secrets that lurk beneath a Midwestern town with a Hitchcock bent. Uh, but this, but here's the synopsis that was given when the script on the when the script was on the blacklist nine years ago. Um, when a traditional Midwestern woman suspects her husband of infidelity, an amateur invest investigation unravels. Oh my gosh, I'm having a really hard time speaking. I don't know what's going on. Um, yeah, so that's that, and I'm just really excited because it's you know being directed by Mimi Cave, and I was a really big fan of Fresh, so. I'm hoping that even if it's going to be really Hitchcockian, that there's still some humor because Fresh was so funny. Um, so, you know, that's what I'm hoping for. Uh, bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Only one sneeze, too. That was weird. Usually I sneeze three times. So that was interesting. Anyway. Uh, you love the Scream 5 casting choices, so I trust their sequel selections. I do, too. You know, I'm pretty impartial about it. Like, I won't know till I see. I'm not mad about it, you know. Some people, I don't know what's going on but just the scream the scream fandom i guess has a has a has a toxic little subset in it because i guess people were complaining because they're like we don't know these people <laughs> like who are these people and th that are being cast you know there's nobody there's nobody good in scream six or blah, blah blah it's like just calm down relax like you're, we're getting kirby back can you not just be grateful goddamn so anyway Nicole Kidman is the best. I'm excited. She was so good in The Northman. Oh my god. Oh my god. She was great in that movie. I'm excited for whatever it is. It's the the synopsis of it too. Like a woman suspects her husband of infidelity and then begins an amateur investigation. It's giving me a little bit of Rear Window vibes. I don't know if you guys feel that as well, but in Rear Window, I mean, it's obviously different, but this guy is in a wheelchair and so he's stuck just watching all his neighbors all the time and it's a great movie great movie one of my favorite hitchcocks for sure um if not my favorite no is my favorite the birds i don't know i don't know but it's giving rear window vibes because in that movie he's just he's watching all his neighbors all the time and he begins to suspect that one of his neighbors is a murderer <laughs> So he like does all this of investigating and just spies on him from his, you know, room and whatever. So it's kind of giving me that vibe a little bit. So maybe that's, maybe that's where they're drawing inspo from. I think it's going to be cool. Um, let's see. Joe Blow, never heard of it. I hadn't either. I don't know how I just, I was looking up, um, I was looking up stuff about, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street and Robert England returning. And that was the first art article that came up. So Yeah. Oh, I wish I liked Fresh as much as everyone else. You know, dark comedy is also not for everyone. 
Um, and that, that movie definitely caters more to like, I think a female audience too, because it's about, you know, navigating dating in this day and age with like dating apps and trying to meet people organically and how everybody's got something that's weird about them. You know, it's just, you know, it's, it's definitely for like a certain audience. Mm. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, every, everyone's parents watch the blacklist. <laughs> it attracts old people for some reason. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why. I mean, my, um, yeah, my, my parents, my dad in particular is like really, really into police dramas. I, and one of them I watched with him for a really long time was NCIS because Mark Harmon as Gibbs. Oh, yum. Oh, such a good show. But I stopped watching it. Okay. This is irrelevant. I'm not going to talk about this, but I just, I stopped watching like years ago after this one character Ziva left because she was, oh, she was great. And then I didn't care about the show anymore, but yeah. Um, Kylie is Hannibal only three seasons. Yes. It's only three seasons. Unfortunately, unfortunately. Uh, oh yes. Uh, don't worry, darling is what you're talking about. You should check it out. I definitely will. I definitely will. I've heard some mess uh, from behind the scenes. I've heard it's uh, it was a messy production. <laughs> so yeah, we'll see how the movie turns out. Not super hopeful for it now. Do I go to horror conventions? I've been to one. I can't wait to return to them, especially after the last two years. Yeah, I've been to one. I went to CreepyCon and it was super cool. I had one really bad experience meeting Andrew Beniarski. He was super creepy and was like, uh, uh, he was coming on to me like really it was intense it was bad uh, but everything else about the con was great yeah and he's not coming back next year so maybe i'll go back next year i really wanted to go to um what's it called monster palooza i wanted to go to monster palooza so bad like nev campbell was going to be there um matthew lillard heather langenkamp so i can't i can't even list there were so many horror icons that were going to be there Oh, but I just, I couldn't afford to go to another con a little recently because I was like putting all my money into my short film, into Somnum. So I just had no, I had no fun money. So I couldn't go do that. But yeah. Yes, Diva was everything. Exactly. She came back in season 17. Se season 17. Jesus. She didn't disappoint. Oh my God. I didn't know she came back. I, I about grew up on NCIS. Listen, my, my dad, no, my grandpa, Oh, rest in peace. He um he had a a mug that had all of Gibbs rules on it. My dad actually might have it now, but yeah, all of Gibbs rules just anyway. Uh am I stoked for what we do in the shadow season four? I haven't ever seen that show, but I know I need to. I know I do. So we'll see. Okay. Oh, let's see what else. So okay, so we talked about that movie. I'm really excited for that coming up. I don't know when production is going to start, but that's what I'm, I'm going to keep my eye on for sure. Because I'm definitely going to try to keep my eye on Mimi Cave's career definitely a little bit more. Um, let's see. <laughs> oh my god, you're so cool. I hope we can be friends someday. Hey, Ken. Good to see ya. <laughs> yeah, okay. What's good, Sledgehammer? Awesome. I'm glad to have ya. Um, yeah, we're going to be ending the stream pretty soon, but glad you could pop in. I'm actually, I'm going to be over on the Sledgehammer channel on Thursday. Uh, the, it's Our stream, I think, is at 5.30 Pacific Standard Time, 5 or 5.30. Um, and we're going to be talking about our top 10 horror moms. So I did make a video on that recently, but now we'll get to talk about it more with some other awesome women in the community, which I'm super psyched about. Um, Ken's wife, Ashley, is going to be hosting that. So definitely head over to his channel and subscribe so you don't miss that. Mm. Let's see. Oh, anyone hear about the Fear Street News? Yes, I was going to talk about this too, uh, but I haven't found like any kind of article or anything about it. So like there's not much actual news about it yet. But um, yeah, they, they are currently working on producing a new Fear Street trilogy. So, or not trilogy, series, sorry. Well, I don't know what, see, I don't know what they meant by series. It could be a new trilogy. You know, could be another like series of movies, could be a limited series. I have got no idea, but that was just announced and I'm very excited about that, but I don't have anything to like pull up to show you. So yes, I did hear about that and I'm so excited because I really hope that Lee Janiak is involved again. Um, I hope that she's directing again or producing. I don't care, but yeah, I love Fear Street. I'm definitely, definitely going to rewatch that soon. Oh my gosh, because it's summertime and just mm, mwah, love it. 
Love it. Yes, I'm excited for the new Anya Taylor horror. Absolutely. The one where she goes to a restaurant and ends up... Wait, what? She ends up being in a horror game. I didn't know that. You just spoiled the plot. Boo. Um... Yeah, but the, but the, as far as I'm aware with that one, she like goes to some restaurant with her spouse and it's like a secluded island and then Ralph or Rafe Fiennes is in it as well and Nicholas Holt. It's going to be great. Oh, Midsommar Day. Oh, shoot. Maybe I should watch Midsommar instead. <gasps> oh, that sounds real good. That sounds real good today. Mm. Um, <laughs> Seriously, can't wait. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I want to be like Kylie Mygrove. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Honestly, like I, the version I am of myself, the younger version of me would think is so cool. And I live by that. You know what I mean? Bots again. I know. I struck them down. I got them. Uh, thank you. Thanks for the tip. I thought you were more of an Abby kind of girl. Ziva's good too, but Abby, when she left that hurt, man, haven't watched that show since I, okay. I'm definitely more of an Abby girl now I would say, but well, mm, both of them. Both. I'm both. Okay. Abby, obviously. Okay. If you guys don't know, because we're talking about NCIS, which is like not horror, but basically, um, so Abby is, she works in forensics. She works in the lab and she's like very goth. And honestly, like good for us, like good for NCIS for having that kind of representation, like a cute little sweet goth character, because I love that. I love that. Um, she wasn't like a stereotype or anything, you know? Um, and then yeah, Ziva, Ziva's just, she's just such a badass. I don't know. Got a real soft spot for both of them. Um, yeah. <gasps> you live in Sweden. Oh, being for midsummer celebrations here in Sweden. You don't know how badly I wish I was there right now. You don't know how badly. Oh my God. I, I wasn't, I ended up not being able to afford coming over to Sweden this summer. I'm so upset. And, but I am going to go to the UK in September. I am going back to the UK this fall. So I'm excited for that. Florence Pugh can do no wrong. Period. Absolutely. <gasps> wish we could see the actress that plays Brooke in Scream 6. Oh my gosh. I wish that she would be cast in more horror movies. Just, like specifically, I'd want to see her in more dark comedy. She, is, she could be right up there with like Samara Weaving. She is such an underrated Scream queen. I love her. Um, What's her name? Um... I, Carlson Young, Carlson Young, I think is her name. Yeah, she's incredible. Incredible. <gasps> Lee Janik will be involved in some capacity. Oh, I love that. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Oh, Corey's heading out. Okay, thanks for coming. Thank you. Sending good vibes. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna be signing off pretty soon here just because I've been live for an hour and a half already. There was one other thing I wanted to bring up. Um, we've gone through a lot of good news today, though. So good stuff, good stuff. I did the last thing I was gonna talk about was just something that like I don't even care about, but like we'll get into that. So American Horror Story season two. Um, the poster is keeping an eye on you. Yeah, this is creepy as hell. Uh, so it's coming back for a second season, but the weird thing about this, so it's premiering on FX on Hulu on July 21st, and this is the first that they've done any kind of marketing for it. Um, and you know, typically like with American Horror Story, the marketing starts months prior, like they really psych you up for it. But I think because the first season was so bad, you know, I would, I'd love to get your thoughts on this, honestly. Like, I think that because the first season was so bad and so many people didn't like it. That is probably why there's not much marketing. I'm surprised it was getting a second season at all. Like, I never heard the news that it was being greenlit for a second season. I don't know if it's because, like, Ryan Murphy is producing and maybe he's, like, putting down the investment. I have no idea. None at all. Mm. So, that's interesting. Hmm. I have to watch Midsommar, Midsommar again because I could not vibe with it the first time. That's honestly not surprising to me. And for me, it's one of those movies where I pick up on new things every single time that I watch it. So it's like, you know, gotta you just you just gotta you gotta revisit. You know, it could it could be a redemption rewatch for you. Um, I have not seen Mulholland Drive. I'm sorry about that. Uh, <gasps> less days for Nope. You guys, it literally comes out in a month and a day. In a month and a day, uh, my ass will be in that theater. Absolutely. I am I have notifications on for, like, advanced tickets and stuff. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm so excited. 
Oh, Carlson Young has her own movie called The Blazing World. Okay. Cool. Cool. Absolutely. Yes. She's one of my favorite horror characters ever, ever. I stan. Yes, we stan. We do stan Brooke. I love Brooke so much. She's She was my favorite character from the show by a mile. By miles and miles. Oh, she wrote and directed it. Good for her. I follow her on Instagram. I'm surprised I haven't heard of that. Oh, excuse me. Which final girl represents me in a way? Um, I would probably say... <laughs> I would probably say Grace from Ready or Not. Um... I don't know. I've, I, I don't know. I just, I really connect to her. It's probably just because like, that's one of my favorite horror movies of all time. Um, but also like, okay, small spoiler for ready or not, but, um, you know, she gets attacked by a child. So she punches the child in the face and she knocks him out. And I just like, I just felt that, you know, I just, <laughs> uh, anyway. So yeah, I don't know. It, it looks like maybe you guys don't really have any, any thoughts on American horror stories. I didn't really think so, you know, I don't know if anybody really cares too much about American Horror Stories, but I just thought that was interesting and, like, just kind of wanted to get your guys' thoughts on American Horror Story in general and just, like, the overall trajectory of that show. It's just, like, it's just weird the direction it's gone. It kind of feels like they've started to tap out, you know? Things, things have been running dry for a while now and it's just wild to me that they were like, yeah, you know, our show is not doing as well. Let's let's definitely make a spinoff and call it basically the same thing. Um, oh, thanks for the tip. This new American Horror Story on Hulu, is it a new season for the episodic anthology series that aired on Hulu, or is this for the main series on FX? Um, so this is, okay, so the American Horror Stories is the one that aired on Hulu for FX, and then American Horror Story is the original show. So, it's all confusing. If you if you mean to tell me that there is another spinoff on top of a spinoff, I'll lose my mind. But yeah. <clears throat> oh my gosh. I'm going to start losing my voice pretty soon here. Um. <laughs> oh my god. Kylie in a white yellow dress or in a white dress, yellow chucks with a with a shoddy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that'd be hella funny. Oh my god. I should, I would dress up as her for Halloween. That'd be such a good costume. But like, I'm not gonna, I'd have to find a wedding dress. I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna do that. Um, let's see. Latest American Horror Story was pretty awful. Yeah, honestly. I, uh, I, I did watch Red Tide, the first half of season 10, and it was fine. I didn't mind it. I thought it was actually pretty original considering, you know, all the other you know, most recent seasons, um, but I haven't finished it. I just don't, I don't have as much of an interest in the show anymore, which just sucks because it used to be one of my favorite shows. Mm. Um, do you mean American Horror Story? Is there any point in watching the show in consecutive order? Um, yes, only because, like, sometimes there's recurring characters. Uh, it's, it's, it'll usually be brief, like, there's usually not too much of a connection, but, like, for example, between, you know, like, okay, well, Murder House pops up quite a bit, um, you know, it pops up in season five and in season eight, uh, and I think in another season as well, um, but yeah, and then, like, the witches, they're in season three and then also in season eight, so you'd have to watch at least, or you'd have to watch at least season three before season eight. Uh, but you know, it bounces around. There's some that aren't connected in any type of way. Like cult is, cult is not connected to anything. Um, asylum, uh, asylum and season four have this weird, really random connection at one point. Um, so I guess maybe the answer is yes. Maybe the answer is yes. Um, is American Horror Story good? I never watched it before. Is it worth the watch? I would say so. A lot of seasons are really, really good. Um, I'm not crazy about season one. Season two is fantastic. Definitely the best season in terms of horror. So if you just want good horror, definitely watch season two. Um, season three is great. Amazing if you love witches. And it's just it's just a really good story. Like season three is just so good. Um, I really like season four. A lot of people don't like it though. It's called Freak Show. Um, but I enjoy it. Uh, season five, I love Lady Gaga plays a vampire, and it's just, I mean, what more do you need to hear about that? Roanoke is lame. Colt, 
didn't really like cult um season eight very bad uh it was just like witches 2.0 but like not good um 1984 bad not a good season uh and then red tide was fine it was fine that's my brief review on it um oh thanks for the tip I looked up Carlson Young. She looks familiar, but I can't place her in the franchise. Is she the sister? Um, if anyone from the series should show up in the movies, it should be Willa Fitzgerald. Um, she played she played Brooke in the series. She was one of the one of the leads, you know, one of um one of Willa Fitz Fitzgerald's characters' best friends. Yeah. So yeah. She uh, I'm sure if you just like threw on the first episode of the show or something, it would jog your memory. Um let's see. Uh, oh, have I seen Search Party? No, I haven't seen that one yet. Oh, it's a show? Oh, I think I was thinking of Searching. Okay, interesting. Has some Alfred Hitchcock vibes. Okay, good to know. Good to know. I tried to watch American Horror Story a while back, but didn't get into it. It's been a few years. Could give it another shot. I think one thing about American Horror Story 2 is, like, it is weird to get into, especially with every new season that comes out, too. The first couple episodes, I'm always like, eh. And then they'll just get really compelling like it's it is tough it's really hard to you, you just you don't get to dip your toes into the world you get thrown into whatever new world they create and it's always very very weird and uncomfortable and so yeah it's tough you you kind of have to just give it a chance and get a couple episodes in and then by that point you know either you're hooked or you're not so it's just it just you know try to give it a fair shot um and see if you get into it I would definitely recommend, if you're, like, unsure about it, definitely just start with a good season, you know? Start with Coven or start with Hotel or something. Mm. Yes, yeah, see, season three is your favorite season because of The Witches and Stevie Nicks. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Um, oh, hey, Jennifer's here. Nice. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, so we're just talking a little bit about... Um, American Horror Story and American Horror Stories and how that was apparently really bad. I never ended up watching American Horror Stories because I think I saw Elvis the Alien did a video about it and just was basically like roasting the new season. He does really good breakdowns of stuff. I think he just released like a two hour long Harry Potter video. So I haven't thrown that one on yet because that's kind of a time commitment. But um, yeah, so I mean, you could always just check out his video and see if you think that American Horror Stories is worth watching. But judging by his commentary and like what I've seen, it just looks really bad. So I'm not going to be there for season two of American Horror Stories. Maybe I'll finish season 10 of American Horror Story soon. Time will tell. Time will tell. Um, but I I've started the series on Netflix Slasher. Still only watched the first episode. Oh, and I finished First Kill. That's a good series. Um, I'm going to try to start watching more horror TV because I never really talk about horror TV on my channel besides like American Horror Story. And there's just so much more out there, you know? Um, so yeah, I'm, I, I do have, I think, three or four series to talk about during my June wrap-up as well, including First Kill, which is just, it's great. You should watch it. Um, but anyway, yeah. I think, um, I think we've pretty much covered all the horror news that I wanted to discuss. Uh, I've been live for an hour and 40 minutes, and it's so great. I've had a good-sized crowd this whole time, and I really appreciate all of the conversation that we've had and hearing all of your thoughts and all that good stuff. Um, is, if there's any you know other news you'd like me to talk about next time, a good place to drop a comment for that would be down below and not in the chat because I will be able to visit comments much easier. Um, so just let me know, you know, any news that I missed or if something comes up, you can always come back and comment on it and I can, I can come back to this video and we can talk about that next time. I'm really enjoying doing more horror movie news live streams because I used to do them like in videos, but I feel like this is a much better format to talk about it just because stuff comes up all the time and I don't necessarily always have the time to plan like a whole video and whatnot. So this way we get to talk about it a whole lot more anyways. So hopefully I'll be doing another one of these probably next month. You know, I'll try to try to do like a monthly horror movie news stream and that could be fun. So thank you guys all so much for being here. Um, thank you for the tips, for all your thoughts, bringing the good vibes, and 